Well, I'm Erin Butel. I'm from the College of Charleston, in case you missed in the massive introductions. I'm going to be talking about southeastern geology. So just to kind of give us a, an orientation, um, we're looking at a geologic map of um, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Georgia. The words that should be familiar with, coastal plain, Piedmont, Blue Ridge, Valley and Ridge, those are the geologic terms. How many of you have heard Piedmont also used for the coast? Oh, good. All right, the geographers didn't get to you. All right. Um, so the coastal plain, um, Scott will be talking quite a bit about, um, especially the surficial features and what we're looking at there. And then I will be talking about um, kind of building on what Steve said um, on how we have the Piedmont and the Blue Ridge and what that means for our um, geology um, that we deal with on a regular basis. I'm kind of going to take the cross-section view, and he gave you the map view, and so hopefully that'll give you an idea as to what kind of rocks we have. All right, so this is a very rough, very um, interpretive cross-section of where we are. Um, these are the Appalachians. This would be, if you want to kind of orient yourself, this is a cross-section as we cut across them. This is the Blue Ridge province. Um, this is where most of us are. And this is um, off to our west. So this is um, basically, when we talked about all those collisions, um, the last collision, Africa coming in and, and swacking us pretty good, um, resulted in all of the gunk or sediments, sand and mud that had come off the previous mountains um, being pushed um, like sand in your shovel. Um, and that's what creates the um, fold and thrust belt through Tennessee. It's what creates our, you know, the beautiful folds that you can actually go and see in the road cuts and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, um, in the Carolinas and in Georgia, we don't get those beautiful examples of classic geology folds and faults. We get gunk. All messed up, all squished, um, really messy. And that's what Steve was talking about with the trains coming in, um, swacking into us. All right, so we're going to go to um, the breakup and then um, move forward um, from there. So we're now looking at a cross section. And what I want to focus on is how we get the Appalachians and how we get the Piedmont. Um, so when we look at what was the breakup, what happened where it was that when you, here's my analogy. When you look at your breakup and you take your brownie and you have the gooey brownie and then you have the nice crusty top and you pull on it, that's how you break up a continent. And so you have all those bits of brownie that come apart. Like it'll break up in the middle, but there'll be all those little bits kind of stuck off to the side. And that's what happened when Rodinia broke up. And so we have all of these bits of continent that are stuck out in the ocean between Africa and North America. And so that's what we deal with in the Piedmont is those bits coming back in. And while they were out um, in the oceans, they had subduction zones operating underneath them. So as they start to come back towards us, we deal with continental bits that have, which are going to be mostly um, you know, sedimentary rocks like sandstones um, and shales and that sort of thing. And then they're going to have a bunch of volcanics in them. And so if you get down deep in the volcanics, um, you're dealing with a lot of um, granites and um, that sort of thing, so the light colored stuff. But you also deal with, especially when you start forming an island arc like out here, you know, a really fresh volcanic arc, we've got some basalts, we've got eroded um, andesitic volcanoes, so we've got a lot of mafic rocks. And that's where you get those rusts um, when they get exposed, and you get a lot of the dark glistening rocks with the amphibolites and stuff. And that's because you have these subduction zones interacting with these volcanic arcs, or sorry, with these bits of brownie or bits of continent that are left behind. So what happens is that we get these multiple subduction zones. They get accreted onto the edge of the continent okay, in two sections. And so these two sections become our Piedmont terrain. So one of them is more continental. The inward one, depending on who you talk to, is more continental than the outer one. Um, we do know that there are and the outer one, um, which extends all the way down to the fall zone, to make Scott happy. Um, so that you know, change in topography where you go from 
um, the Piedmont terrain down to the coastal plain, and you come off of the, the rocky highs down to the um, gunk sandstone. Um, this one, we know that there are trilobites in it um, that actually are African in origin, more likely to be African in origin. However, there was a shotgun issue, so we don't know a whole lot more than that. Um, talk to Pradeep Talwani, if any of you know him, he can tell you about that. Um, so we have this issue, which, ha which this continent, continental bit from Africa, which is accreted on, and it has a lot of um, mafic rocks, sed mafic sedimentary rocks, so basically you erode a volcano, and then you squish it onto the continent. And now all of them are metamorphosed because you're hitting it once, twice, and here comes Africa, and we're going to hit it again. So we have a lot of um, metamorphic rocks from medium to high grade, so moderate to um, massively squished rocks. So that creates our central Piedmont area right in here. As you can see, it encompasses a good portion of Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. There also is a lot of faulting going on in there um, because depending on who you talk to, <laughs> these terrains did not come in at right angles. They came in sliding along those subduction zones, so they're oblique. They're coming in at all sorts of angles. This picture shows it coming in from the south and moving north. Um, the second terrain, um, Steve was saying he has images where it comes down from the north. We're still working on it. Um, and so we have the secretion of terrains and then ongoing um, granitoid plutons that come in um, as we keep accreting stuff. Okay. So that's how we get the Piedmont, which most of us deal with, which is this kind of just if, you know, you go to the outcrop and you're like, and this one is like this, and then you go to the next one and it looks completely different. And that's because they've just have been hit so many times and they are bits that were squished together to make Rodinia and then pulled apart, sat in the ocean, had volcanism, and then came back accreted, squished again, and then hit by Africa, squished again, squishes. All right, so what's the result of this? So this is, takes a second to orient yourself, um, or at least it takes me a minute to orient myself. It's on its side so that they could show everything. Um, so here's Georgia, here's South Carolina, here's North Carolina. So South Carolina kind of goes like that. Here's North Carolina coming up into the Blue Ridge. Georgia I don't know as well, so I'll just go like that. <laughs> and so what we have are, is this terrain right here. Here's the Blue Ridge, which is a giant thrust belt. So you have a huge piece of highly metamorphic rock um, that is being pushed up over the sediments that were eroded off of the previous um, orogenic events. So that's the Blue Ridge. And then we have our terrains, which are accreted onto here. And then we go out into the mysterious um, crust out here, which we'll talk about in a second. But basically, it's covered with sediments. So we're not sure if it's African. We think so, probably. Um, but what I want you to note on this when we think about earthquakes is we've got these huge suture zones that have been active and hit again and again and again. So these are very large zones of weakness um, that have been active multiple times. We have thickened crust in here because we squished it all. Um, and then we did something else to it. I'm going to take a step back a second and talk about what we did to it in just a second. Um, because I wanted you just to get an idea as to what, what your region might look like when you're talking to people. And that is, if we start in the upstate with our, our very squished areas, um, these are cross sections that come off the bottom of our geo the geologic maps for South Carolina. And all of the maps now have cross sections on them. You can download them and play with them in, in GIS. And I think the cross sections are really good for visualizing because the maps a lot of times are just big pink splotches. And you're like, that's nice. And they've got a bunch of symbols on them. Um, so th you can see how deformed these metamorphic rocks are. We've got faults that have little thrusting up of little pieces on them. Um, in other places, it's much larger scale. And you have your um, uh, igneous rocks in there as well. Okay. Um, and then this is coming um, also shows you just the variation within that. So we've got extremely tightly folded um, materials um, up in the table rock area, which is starting to get to the Blue Ridge. And then we're in the Ware Shoals, so we're right in the middle right here. 
And you can see we've got, there's not a lot of folding going on, but basically it's a bunch of stuff that's just kind of stuck together with a lot of metamor um, igneous intrusions. Okay, so I said that we have this area that's been accreted. It's the Piedmont um, terrains, um, the Carolina terrain and the whatever you want to call it today terrain. Um, it, if any of you went to GSA, there were multiple discussions about what you should call each terrain, et cetera. So if, if you get into that and you're aware of that, I personally think that for understanding it, it you just need to know that it came from somewhere else and where it came from. Um, so we have squished everything, we've created the fold and thrust belt, and then we have, I said we had these faults that were bounding it, and we've had three collision events, and then we did something else to it. And what we did to it was we ripped it. So this is Pangaea has broken off, and these are the major extensional faults that we now have um, put on top of our compressional faults. A lot of them are reactivated um, compressional faults or squish faults, and they now are pulling apart and have created these normal faults all up and down the East Coast as Pangaea broke away, like Steve showed you. And so that created more zones of weakness. These are the large scale fault things, but just like if you imagine that brownie top, it doesn't quite work that way. It's not like a single fault usually. It's a lot of little chunks of faults that are connected to each other. Um, this is the one that you don't hear as much about. This is the South Georgia Rift. And so you can see just by the outline that that is not one big fault, right? This is a bunch of little breaks as it was spreading apart. And as it begins to spread apart, what happens is you have a massive influx of volcanism, and it's basaltic volcanism, or diabase, but mafic vol volcanism. So all of the black diabase dikes get intruded like this, and you have into the basins where we've ripped it apart and we've got those normal faulted basins, you've got a bunch of volcanic sills. And that becomes really important when we talk about earthquakes, because it's one of the reasons we think that earthquakes are localized. Maybe. Nobody gets. Um, and then an interesting side note, um, which I don't think Scott's going to talk about, the dikes, depending on where you are, most of the places they are high areas erosionally. So um, if you go up to Raleigh-Durham, um, where you've, you're sitting in the middle of one of these old basins, okay. Um, when I was mapping the dikes there, like half the time there'd be a railroad sitting on top of the dike because they're high spots. And then um, I was talking to Tyler Clark and he's like, yeah, and they do all this weird stuff to the pollution because they either hold it or they move it or so things that you didn't think that 200 million year old mafic volcanism would affect, affect. Okay. So we have these. Um, basins, they get the um, basalt on top, in, basically in them as they are um, finishing their formation, and then it just continues to get stretched, 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 and eventually we form oceanic crust. This process is very, very poorly understood. How do you make that final step? How does it determine which one to extend it? Um, the crust, this is vertically exaggerated looks like this. We've stretched the brownie as far as it can go, um, and then somehow gone from the brownie, mafic extrusions, mafic extrusions, mafic extrusions, and then eventually some of them have spread enough and had enough volcanism that they become ocean floor. And that exact process is a little squishy. And then on top of that, what happens is you get massive amounts of sediment depositing into these basins. And Scott's going to talk more about that. But essentially, you have stretched the crust. It's thin. It's low. You have the Appalachians. Erode the high point. Dump it into the low point. Um, so this are, these are some of the, um, as we're coming off the fall line, um, you can just see these. Basically, this is sea level rise and fall again and again across Carolina. So we're up in the kind of the mid-state. We come all the way out to Charleston. Um, this is clearly more vertically exaggerated than the other ones. Um, but what, once again, you're just looking at sediment packages where you have sediment package after sediment package after sediment package from 200 million, uh, 230 million years ago on deposited here. Um, this is from Maine, but I think this is a good summary. 
Rodinia causes giant mountains that look like the Himalayas. They get ripped apart. Um, we have a series of island arcs and um, continental bits that form offshore. They get accreted on and form the Piedmont. Then Africa comes in and um, creates the Appalachians and a giant Blue Ridge thrust. Then in the Triassic and Jurassic, it rips apart. Africa takes off. So does South America. Um, and then you have these basins, which are filled in with sediment um, and other gunk. And that's where we are today. And we're sitting here on kilometers of sediment above those basins with that basalt down low. Well. 